Hello everyone and welcome to another video involving the Barn Find Pentium Pro machine. Uh, we're going to see if we can get this machine working a little bit better in this video. Uh, so if you're unaware of this machine from my other videos, uh, this is a machine that I found in a shed in New Delhi. Uh, and it took a lot of cleaning up and, and jiggery pokery, but eventually I was able to get it working uh, of sorts. There seems to be an issue with the motherboard in that the IDE channels are not working, the ISA slots are not working and the processor speed is being misrepresented. Uh, this should be running in at 150 megahertz, it's actually coming in at 120 megahertz which is odd. Uh, now I have checked the jumpers for the various bus speeds and multipliers for the processor and the ISA bus and they're all checking out okay according to the manual. Uh, I have tried checking the BIOS version, upgrading to two or three different versions of the BIOS that I was able to find online and it's the same result with every single version. Now I'm pretty much concluded at this point that this machine needs a new motherboard uh, but a couple of people who watched those previous videos did get in touch and recommend that I try a different processor first which is what we're going to do in this video. The reason being in their view that the processor could be a likely culprit for these problems um, and buying a replacement Pentium Pro processor is actually a lot easier at this point than getting a replacement motherboard. Uh, a replacement processor comes in on eBay about £25, a motherboard £50 to £75 depending on the working condition. Uh, now that would be the case that a processor costs £25 except I managed to find a new one. So uh, as part of this video we're going to unbox this and then we're going to install it and see if it has any effect on this machine. So here we go guys, the Intel Pentium Pro processor from 1996. Uh, this one is the 200 megahertz variant with 256K of cache. Uh, so not the fastest one, they did make uh, another 200 megahertz with 512K of cache and a 200 megahertz with a meg of cache, which was the black top version. This is the gold top with 256K of cache. So not the fastest in the range, but still faster than the 150 megahertz version that's in the current machine. So, I almost feel bad opening this. It's, it's been sat on a shelf somewhere since 1996. It's still in its original shrink wrap, but we are where we are. And uh, it's going to be a nice video for you guys to see one of these unboxed, I guess. So, let's crack on. No going back now. So, inside. Okay. So it's just cardboard insert inside and everything comes out on this little tray. So we get the CPU itself, which comes with a fan heatsink, which is interesting because the 150 megahertz variant that's on there is uh, just a heatsink, it doesn't have a fan. So I'll come back to that in a moment, and then we've got this bag of goodies here. So we have the power adapter for that little fan, so it's a little bespoke connector here and then a Molex adapter to connect onto the uh, power supply. Get some thermal paste, which has probably had it as it's been in there for 20 plus years at this point. We get a certificate of authenticity. Congratulations on the purchase of your new Intel Pentium Pro processor based system. You have joined the ranks of users experiencing Intel's next generation of performance and features for desktops, workstations and servers. Pentium Pro Processor family provides optimal performance for 32-bit applications running on advanced operating systems such as Windows NT, OS2 and Unix. So that's interesting because I did want to uh, use this system with OS2 at some point, so it's interesting to know that 
I mean, obviously it supports it, it's an x86 based system, but specifically mentioned here is useful to know. The hologram on the processor packaging and the certificate is your assurance that your system is powered by an authentic Intel processor. This boxed Printium Pro processor is covered by three year limited warranty, oh, uh, what are we now, 25 years? <laughs> um, Warranty remedies limited at Intel's option to repair, replacement or refund. If you have any questions regarding the Pentium Pro processor in your system, contact the local system assembler or Intel on phone number. And a certificate of authenticity on the back. We also have... Ooh. So, one of the things I was upset at when I uh, rebuilt the system was that I had to remove the original Intel Pentium Pro sticker. And it comes with one. I hope you can see that. I think we'll definitely have to add that on the system at the end of this video. That's awesome. And then we get the installation notes, um, which, yeah, uh, you line it up and you put it in a hole, basically. And then you apply the grease, you put the clips on, and you plug in the fan. And then you <laughs> don't forget to add the sticker to the front of your chassis as per the instruction manual. That's awesome. And then the same thing in German and French and a bunch of other languages. Awesome. So let's have a look at the actual processor. Tear here. Okay. Wow. Okay. So the heatsink is in this part. So, pretty small by today's standards, but back in the day, this would have been a significantly sized uh, CPU cooler. Certainly a 486 or a Pentium, uh, even some of the overdrives didn't need a, a fan, but this one comes with it. Uh, it does look like the fan's replaceable, but it is a custom sized fan, so if, this, if the uh, lubrication on these bearings has worn out, it could be in a little bit of a problem. Um, but it's just got the standard retention clip system that we still get variants of today on things like AMD's uh, AM4 platform. And we have also have Big Daddy. That is a beauty. Check that out. So the Intel Pentium Pro processor um, is often claimed to have one of the highest amounts of gold in any legacy CPU. So a lot of these have been taken up by gold reclamation services. They buy them in, in cheap in bulk in unknown conditions and they, they strip all this gold plating off. Um, and obviously there's gold plating on the pins as well. But actually, I've read there's actually more gold in other CPUs. It's just it's more obvious in this one and maybe a little bit easier to extract from this flat surface than it is from um, other machines. But uh, awesome little processor. I say little, it's huge. Um, you compare it to something like a, a 486 or a early Pentium, it's absolutely massive. But uh, let's uh, let's get this in the system. We'll get the system up on the bench here. We'll get it installed. We'll mess with some jumper settings, and we'll we'll see if it works. I'm not holding out much hope, but it's nice to play with this tech anyway. So first things first, we need to get this old cooler off, which luckily is just a little press down thing here. He says. I'm always absolutely terrified of putting a screwdriver through a motherboard with these things, so to do them by hand is preferred, but there we go. Oof. Whew. It's always a bit nail biting. And there we see the 150 megahertz. CPU that came with this machine. I should probably do this laying down to be honest, but can't get a good angle on the angle on the camera. There we go. So out with the old, and now in with the new. Well, 
let's apply some of this old paste. Not quite sure we need this entire tube, but uh, that feels like it's enough. And then this will only go on one way because the socket is offset. So. doesn't want to go on. Why don't you want to go on? There we go. Oh, that side on first. Okay. And then. Good. And then, last step is to connect up our fan, which this motherboard does have a fan header up here, but this uh, kit only comes with a connector for a Molex plug, so we'll just have to deal with that. Connect it in, and voila. So, only other thing we need to change is some jumper settings, which are just out here. So we'll reposition and uh, swap those over. Okay, so we're ready to change the uh, jumper settings. We're going to be changing a couple of jumpers on this bank here. Uh, so this controls the CMOS password and the NV RAM and the rest of the bus and processor speed settings. So I've got the manual right here. Uh, you can see we're on a 150 megahertz process at the moment, so we have jumpers on 17 and 19, 10 and 12, 11 and 13. We need to change those for the 200 megahertz uh, speed, so I'm going to change from 17 and 19 to 1921, and 10 to 12 to 12 and 14, and uh, the 11 and 3 to the 9 and 11. So we'll do that now. Okay, so we're now set up in accordance with the manual uh, what the jumper setting should be for this speed processor. So we'll put it all back together, and power it up, and see what happens. Okay, so let's find out if any of this was actually worth it. Well, the system still powers on, which is good. We've got no beep codes, it's just into the BIOS and have a look. Okay. What? So <laughs> oh man. Um so before we had a 150 megahertz processor that was reporting at 120 megahertz. Now we have a 200 megahertz processor that's reporting at 133. So clearly there is something wrong with this board. Um, it looks to me like the jumper that determines the um, multiplier setting is not reporting that information back to the BIOS correctly. So the 200 megahertz chip should have a bus speed of 66 megahertz and a multiplier of 3. But what we're getting is a bus speed of 66 megahertz and a multiplier of 2 giving 133. And similarly, when we had the uh, 150 in there, we were getting reported as 120. That would have been a 60 megahertz bus with a two and a half times multiplier and we were getting a 60 megahertz bus with a two times multiplier. So that seems to be the issue. I'm guessing there's something wrong with the BIOS chip on this board. Unfortunately it's not a socketed chip, it's a soldered chip so it's not something I can easily replace. I think ultimately I'm going to uh, replace this motherboard. Let's just see if this would actually continue and boot into Windows. Because to be honest although it's annoying that the IDE channels don't work and I have to use a SCSI controller. 
and that the ISA slots don't work, so I'm using a PCI sound card. Ultimately, this machine still works. It still plays all my old DOS games and early Windows 95 games. So I don't, I don't know. I'm, part of me wants to make sure it's working 100% and replace that motherboard, but part of me is just like, it, it works, you know? And it looks like we're booting into Windows fine as, as we have done before. It's picking up the new monitor because I had to switch monitors the other monitor. Can't tell on me. I mean, ultimately, this is working just fine. I don't know how much effort I want to put into making the system report its processor speed correctly. I mean, it's not affecting what I want to do with the system, but... Okay, well, this isn't going to be totally lost, guys. There's one more thing I want to do, just bear with me. So, the other thing I was going to do, guys, was I was thinking of taking off this Pentium Pro sticker that I got from Geekenspiel. It is a reproduction. And replace it with the one that came with the processor, but to be honest, this one actually looks nicer than the one that came boxed with the Pentium Pro, and it's a better size as well when you compare it to the Windows sticker. So initially I was going to install it, but I think I'm going to leave it. I'm going to put it back in the box. So if anyone wants an original Pentium Pro uh, sticker, let me know. I may be able to hook you up, but no, I'm going to leave this one in place. I think the, the Geekenspiel one wins out over the uh, the original in this instance. So there you have it guys, I hope you found this uh, video enjoyable, even though the, the outcome wasn't exactly what I'd planned, but uh, it's still interesting nonetheless, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this machine and how we might improve things, uh, any, any ideas short of replacing the motherboard at this point I'm open to. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up, and if you're not already, please consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. Uh, and Until next time, have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.